Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Magna Nordahl, I'm an airline pilot with passion for aviation history. Today it's the 11th of August and it's exactly 50 years ago since the first flight of the F5E Tiger II. Chuck Yeager, the famous test pilot who was the first to fly faster than the speed of sound, stated that the F5 was the most fun aircraft to fly. And with that he meant the Tiger II. This story of the F-5 started in 1959 when Northrop's N-156F made its first flight. In 1962, the Kennedy administration ordered it into production as the F-5A Freedom Fighter. Over the next 10 years, a total of 1,204 single-seat A models and twin-set B models were produced and exported to 13 countries. Some A models were modified and named FIC, Scotty Tiger. This story is shown in a previous video, you find a link below. I have also published videos with a detailed walk around and explain every switch and instrument in the cockpit. I recommend you to watch them, because I am not going to repeat what I said in those videos. Even the Freedom Fighter was a cost effective fighter aircraft, it had many shortcomings. It was designed as a lightweight day fighter and it lacked radar and proved to be better as a fighter bomber. In the late 1960s, Northrop started to work with an upgrade with better air-to-air -air performance against aircraft like the MiG-21. They called it the F-5A-21. In 1970, Northrop won the International Fighter Aircraft Competition and the Dash-21 became the F-5E Tiger II. The first Tiger was the FIC Scotty Tiger. Compared with the F5A, the E model has more powerful engines, more fuel capacity, upgraded avionics including a radar. Furthermore, the E model is one foot longer and one foot wider. The easiest way to distinguish the A and E models from each other are the different shapes of the lurks, leading edge root extensions and the shape of the aft dorsal. Furthermore, the Tiger has auxiliary air intake doors for the engines. The intake doors are open during ground operations, takeoff and landing. If they fail to open for takeoff, the engines will lose 7% thrust. And if they are left open in flight, the fuel consumption will increase by up to 10%. When looking at the underside of the Tiger, you will notice that it doesn't have the area rule like on the A model. While the speed brakes are close to each other on the A model, they are some distance apart on the E model. This is the shaft and flare launcher. The arrest hook is standard, but it's not intended to be used on aircraft carriers. It is used to catch an arrest wire at the end of the runway in case the aircraft cannot stop in time, for example brake failure or other reasons. Furthermore, the E model can only carry Sidewinder missiles and not external fuel tanks like the A model. The air intakes are larger and perforated for boundary layer control. The two M2920 mm guns from the A model are retained. And in the nose is an Emerson APQ-153 or 157 radar. Some Tigers have a modified nose that improves stability at low speeds. It's called a shark nose and originates from the F-20 Tiger Shark. But that's another story. Finally, we have an oddity. The nose gear strut on the Tiger can be extended 13 inches, adding 3 degrees to the pitch attitude on the ground. This is used for a takeoff and reduces the takeoff distance. The F5E has two General Electric J85 GE 21A engines. They produce 3,500 pounds force, or 16 kilonewton thrust at dry power, and 5,000 pound force, or 22 kilonewton with afterburner. This is 25% more OMP compared to the Dash 13 engines in the A model. The empty weight is uh, 4,347 kilos, they say, 
Max takeoff weight is 11,192 kilos. The internal fuel capacity is 2,560 liters and up to 3,120 liters extra can be carried in three drop tanks. There are seven pylons and they can carry 3,200 kilos in total. The lift to drag ratio is 10 to 1, which is the same as a Cessna 172. They also have the same wing area, more or less, but in all other aspects they differ. The Tiger II has a maximum speed of Mach 1.6 at 36,000 feet. The most economical cruise speed is Mach 0.8. The stall speed with 50% internal fuel and the landing configuration is 124 knots. Never exceed speed is 710 knots. The initial rate of climb is 34,500 feet per minute and the service ceiling is 51,800 feet. The combat radius with 20 minutes reserve is 120 nautical miles and the ferry range is 1,385 nautical miles, also with 20 minutes reserve. Peeking into the cockpit, we recognize many features from the FIA, which is described in detail in this video. The most obvious difference is the radar screen. Starting on the left console panel, we have the circuit breakers, a test button for the G-suit, a control panel for shafts and flares, panel for the pitch and yaw dampers, and rudder trim, and the radar control panel. The flaps lever has three positions, full down, emergency up, and thumb switch, activating the flap switch on the right throttle lever. This switch has three positions, auto, fixed and up. In auto position, the position of the flaps is regulated as a function of angle of attack, airspeed and altitude. In the fixed position, the flaps is set for the best position for long range cruise with external stores. Maximum speed with the flaps extended is 550 knots indicated or max 0.95, whichever comes first and alert with sound if the flaps is extended when the speed limit is exceeded. In up position, the flaps is fully up. This is the release button for the shafts and flares. The red button is the radio transmitter switch. And this is the cage button for the optical sight. To the left of the throttle quadrant is the switch to extend the nose gear strut. And finally, we have a storage box for small items. The left vertical panel is very like the panel in the F5A. The interval switch is used to select the interval external stores are released from the pylons. The values are 0 0.06, 0 0.10 and 0 0.14 seconds. The instrument panel is better organized than the A model. On the top is the pitch trim indicator, speed indicator, attitude indicator, and altimeter. This is the horizontal situation indicator, HSI. It provides magnetic heading and bearing and distance to a ground station, and guidance for ILS approach if an ILS receiver is installed. This is the angle of attack indicator. It is not graded in degrees, but units from 0 to 30. The optimum angle of attack for approach is 15.8 units and marked with this white index. The Tiger has its maximum rate of turn when the angle of attack is 21 units. The left side is rounded off with a standby attitude indicator and vertical speed indicator. To the left of the optical side is the angle of attack indexer. It is active when the aircraft is in landing configuration. The red symbol means you are too slow. The green symbol means you are on speed. And the amber symbol means you are too fast. And this is a camera. This is the control panel for the optical side. And this is the radar screen. And on each side are engine fire warning lights. This aircraft is equipped with an UHF radio and TACAN, which is for navigation. And below are some circuit breakers. Back to the instrument panel, we have a clock, 
radar warning receiver with control panel and G meter. The engine instruments are similar to the F5A. This is the indicator for the auxiliary air intake doors. The fuel content indicator has two needles. The left engine is fed from the forward fuel cell, which has less capacity than the two cells feeding the right engine. The quantity in the fuel cells is balanced automatically when this switch is in auto balance position. And this is the cabin pressure indicator. The right vertical panel is very similar to the A model, but simplified as some functions has become automatic. On the right console panel do we have the oxygen regulator, caution light panel, IAF and SIF control panel, a compass control switch, light controls, a test switch for fuel and oxygen indicators. And finally we have a map case and more circuit breakers. All in all, this is an organized cockpit. And if you wonder why you didn't mention the control stick, it's because it's similar to the control stick on the A model. So please watch that video. The two-seat Tiger was first flown in 1974. While the single-seat Tiger is very similar to its older sibling, the two-seat Tiger II is quite different from the F5B. The F5B is 25 cm shorter than the single seat F5A, but the F5F is 1 meter longer than the F5E. This enables the F model to carry the same radar as the E model. It also allows the two seater to retain one 20 mm gun. Another change is that the two seater has wing fences to improve boundary layer control at high angle of attack. Since the other variants don't have wing fences, it's my qualified guess that it has something to do with the longer nose on the two-seater. This moves the center of gravity forward, which is alleviated by increasing the travel on the horizontal tailplane. On a single-seater, the tailplane can move 17 degrees up. On a two-seater, the tailplane can move 20 degrees up. And somehow, those factors altogether affect the airflow over the wing requiring better control of the airflow. Wing fences are simple and well proven, but increase the aerodynamic drag. But that's not a major problem for a trainer aircraft. The reconnaissance variant of the Tiger was developed in 1979 by Northrop as a private venture. The nose was extended 20 cm and could carry 4KS121A 70mm cameras. Because of a high unit price, only 12 were sold, 2 to Malaysia and 10 to Saudi Arabia. In addition, did Singapore convert 8 of its own E models and 7 aircraft from Taiwan to RF5E standard. The US Navy started to receive Tiger IIs in 1974. They were used to simulate MiG-21 at the Navy Fighter Weapons School, known as Top Gun. In a later video, I will compare the F-5 Tiger with the MiG-21 and see how they fared against each other. When the F-5s were worn out, the Navy ordered 44 low-hour F-5Es from Switzerland. The aircraft were delivered in the period from 2003 to 2007 and they were modified and redesignated F5N. And how was it to fight against the Tiger? According to former F-14 pilot John Chesser, it was a mean little machine. Quote, Within visual range, they were nasty. Small, they were also hard to see. They would drive me crazy trying to fight them in my F-14. I always thought if I were the leader in some small country needing an inexpensive but deadly air force, I would load up a bunch of F-5s as point defense fighters. And that's exactly what many small countries did. When the production of the Tiger II ended in 1987, a total of 1,400 units had been built. As of 2021, 
More than 400 units were still in service in Bahrain, Brazil, Chile, Honduras, Iran, Kenya, Mexico, Morocco, South Korea, Switzerland, Taiwan, Thailand, Tunisia, and United States with the US Navy and Marine Corps, and Yemen. Former users were Ethiopia, Indonesia, Jordan, Malaysia, Saudi Arabia, Singapore, South Vietnam, and Vietnam, Sudan, Tunisia, and US Air Force. And in addition, we have more operators of the first generation, the F5A and B models, and they are listed in the first video about the F5. And this is all about the F5 for this time. I hope you liked it. On my to-do list, I have the F-86 Sabre, MiG-15, F-104 Starfighter, and A-7 Corsair. What do you think? Which one shall I make a video about next? That's up to you to decide. Please leave your vote in the comment section below. Okay, thank you for watching, have a wonderful day, and happy learning!